now analyzes the game. King McClure, former Baylor guard, ESPN college basketball analyst on 365 Sports. King, I, I don't even know how. Um, when you get out, re I know it's much more than this, but when you are out rebounded by nearly 30, what does that, what is the deal? What is that effort? Is that hustle? Is it luck? What, uh, what is that? Man, I, I, honestly, man, I, I can't even I can't even describe uh, what 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 we saw today out out of the Bears and for for them to be out rebounded by that much. Uh, to, to to simply put it, the Bears just got punked today. They they got punked by Iowa State, and 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 that's that's how you that's all you can really say about that. How do you take what's happened the last couple of weeks? I mean, there's some good things in there too. And then change that as you move forward in the tournament, especially for the next next few days, not knowing what you're going to see. Yeah, it's honestly one of those things where you just have to have like a short, almost a short term memory loss. That's what we like to call it because a lot of times when you playing in a tournament like this and you go on to the NCAA tournament, I mean now it's a one game season. So now if you hold your head, hold your head, and you're remembering what's going on and you know, you're still soaking on the last – you'll you'll be out and your season will be done. So it's one of those things you have to keep moving forward. You have to learn from that and make sure it's not a repeat. But the problem is, though, you know, effort has been the problem too many times this season. That's the biggest thing that Coach Drew has had the coaches, the effort on the defensive end, the rebounding. I mean, I think between the two bigs, they might have had, I want to say zero rebounds maybe or like one or two. Pretty close. That's just that's – that's un that's unacceptable. So, I mean, for me, you, you you have to keep looking forward, and at the end of the day, one game at a time from now on. Uh, I know there's there's plenty of other their negatives to get to. Uh, let's focus on a positive. What do you think of Jalen Bridges today? Well, Jalen Bridges, <clears throat> Jalen Bridges did a great job of stepping up when his name was when his time was called. Because when I think about Iowa State, they do a great job of making it tough on the guards because they put lengths on uh, on our guards and it, it kind of bothers them at times. So they do a great job of canceling out the guards. He needed somebody else to step up. And frankly, Jalen Bridges gave us a chance to win the game. So without Jalen Bridges, the game probably wouldn't even be really close because of the, you know, the difference on the, on the, on the glass. But Jalen Bridges played well. I mean, they needed to carry over. And, and I think that he can be that. He's finally becoming comfortable in their shoes and the role that he is you know, starting to play. Fran called him that he was the Baylor's uh, Kevin McCullough, and I, I like that. I mean, he's starting to embrace his role and starting to really step up. King, you talked about washing this out. They have a full week, the selection Sunday. They could play as early as Thursday, Thursday or Friday, no matter what. So they do have a full week. So what is Scott Drew? What is it more mental or physical the next six or seven days? You know, I I guess that's the hard part about being a coach. Because if I'm Scott Drew, I have no idea how I'm addressing this. Because at this <laughs> point of the season, it, it, it's almost like it's too late. Like it, It's almost like you have to accept who your team is and who your team isn't. And it, see what you do well, what you do good, and try to capitalize on those. But knowing Coach Drew, I know they'll probably take tomorrow off uh, today's Thursday, they'll take Friday off. I'm sure Saturday and Sunday, maybe even Monday. I mean, they might even take two days off. But the next two practices will be extremely hard. It'll be a whole bunch of rebounded drills because Coach Drew is going to want to try to, you know, work on that and fix that. But it'll be a lot of physicality. It'll be a really hard practice the next few days. But then towards, you know, the game time, it'll, it'll be lighter and he'll, he'll ease up. But, like, the next practice and the practice after that will probably be extremely hard. What kind of team do you think they need to match up with in the first couple rounds to get to the next weekend? Uh, they need to match up with a team that does not – how do I phrase this? I, I guess a team that is not super aggressive on the defensive side. Because if you match up with a team like a Houston, per se, or something like that, that this is super physical and tries to punk you from when the time they step on the court – I don't know if Baylor will, will fare out well with that. So, me, I think they need to play they need to run against a team who is a little bit less aggressive on the defensive side, and that's not so physical. 
You know, um, you you made that point about you don't even know what to do. This is who you are. You you, you can't just like flip a switch, can you? you? Can't just turn a light on and you become. Or can they get back to who they were when they won what ten of eleven or nine straight conference games? Yeah, I think they can. But I mean, at this point in the season, the way they get there is just by outscoring people. Like, I, like that's just who they. That's just what they have to do. Defensively, they're not going to be great. They're not going to be the toughest team. They're just going to have to outscore you. And now, can they do that and get hot and get on the streak? Yes, they can. But I, I just think at this point in the season, they have to accept who they are. And they're a team that's going to out, try to outscore you. If it works, they win. If it doesn't work, then they're in for a long night. Yeah, it's old Baylor football. It's, it's, it's old back in the day. Hey, you better score 50 or, you know, you're going to probably lose the game. Well, and, King, it's, you know, for an even closer comparison, it's kind of early, like, not the first couple of, of really good teams they had, but Scott Drew had some good teams that didn't play defense all that well either, kind of in the middle there, before the identity kind of changed over time. Yeah, no, for sure. The identity has definitely changed. And, I mean, I, I saw – I'm here at, in Kansas City, and I saw Scott Drew – I saw Scott Drew and it got a chance to talk to him after the game. And, you know, he's upset. He, he, he's pissed off because just to be out rebounded like that, to be able to get dominated on the glass like that. He looked at me and said, when is the last time we've ever got dominated on the glass like this? Like almost about 30. Like the look on his face was like, yo, what, 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 what the freak do I do? Like what? And, and you could tell he was really upset. And I mean, Coach Drew is the ultimate competitor. He hates losing, especially losing to a team three times in one season. That typically doesn't happen. So you hate to see that, but I think ultimately they 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 know who they are, and Coach Drew's going to try to correct it. But at this point in the season, you 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 just really can't can, 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 uh, correct it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. Like, why is it why is it going to change now? All of a sudden, after all these months, uh, you're absolutely dead on with that. So yeah, there's there have to be a long look in the mirror and. And some figuring out here pretty soon uh, in the next, you know, couple of days of, of which direction they want to choose to go. But uh, on the flip side, I mean, there is a team celebrating what was a, a very nice win, and uh, that's Iowa State. Now, as you mentioned, 3-0 and over Baylor this season. Uh, obviously, had a situation just a week ago with Caleb Grill, and, you know, they didn't let that uh, sidetrack them at all. T.J. Otzelberger and the, the clones uh, are, you know, handling their business now. King, what do you think about ISU as we move towards the tournament? And they move forward uh, after the win today. You know, I, I like their team. And, I mean, the whole Caleb Grill scenario, there's been a lot of drama in the Big 12, which is crazy in like, the past, like, two weeks. A lot of drama, which you typically don't see. But with the Caleb Grill incident, I mean, I don't know what happened, don't know what was said, but – it seems like the team has been able to look past that and been able to gel and come together and find ways to, to, to win games. I mean, they've played Baylor twice. Uh, they'll probably play, I want to say, Kansas tomorrow if Kansas pulls this one off. Uh, but I think this team is good. I, mean, I think the way that they play number one defense in the Big 12, they, they, they pressure you, they have length, they're ultra-physical. Uh, T.J. Alsterberger, he, he, he's a great coach. He's a very underrated coach in the Big 12. He knows what he's doing, takes care of business. And, and Gabe Coucher is probably the most underappreciated, undervalued player in the Big 12. I mean, second team all Big 12, first team all Big 12 defense. I mean, that guy is so valuable to his squad, and he's been so good all year. And really nobody talks about him. I mean, for a guy who's been hor who was horrible last year to what he is this year, honestly, maybe he should have got most improved player. Uh, I mean, with the, you know, they would give it to a Kansas guy. They, you know how that goes. Ah. But <laughs> yeah, Gabe, Gabe Couser, I mean, he, he's been so great. And so, he meant so much to that team. And they're old. Gabe Couser's old. Jaron Holmes old. Outside of Lipsy, the majority of those guys are old. So they, they know how to handle business. King, there's one other thing. And uh, trading text back and forth sometimes with Craig or Paul or sometimes with Paul during the game. In the last couple of weeks, Iowa State, the last, what, five or six days, Iowa State is 56 of 109 from the field. They would uh, – is it also not only are they being dominated on the defensive end or on the, uh, on the offensive boards by the opponent, but it seems like they are allowing an inordinate amount of shots right at the rim. 
Yeah, and I, I think primarily that's due to them getting steals. And when you look at their turnover percentage and how they how much they turn people over, I mean, they're getting layups. They're, they're getting easy. And a lot of times when you're getting those easies, I mean, your, your confidence starts growing. The harder you play on defense, you get a fast break layup, you get another one, you get another one. All of a sudden, your confidence is rolling, and now you're able to get downhill with ease. And, and these guys, I mean, Darren Holmes, one of the best guards in the Big 12 when it comes to being able to use his body and shield off the guard defender and be able to finish at the rim. And Gabe Kaus, the same thing. Lipsy, not really a three-point shooter, so what he does is get to the rim and find people. You know, he, he, he's played really well, too. Uh, undervalued freshman, Taman Lipsy has, has been phenomenal. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's primarily due to their defense and how they turn people over. They're getting a lot of easy layups. King, uh, Mark Adams is out at Texas Tech. Would you be surprised to see Kirby Hocutt go to the Scott Drew tree for Grant McCaslin, who's been there uh, on on the Texas Tech staff before, or maybe even Paul Mills? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm definitely going uh, Grant McCaslin or, or, or Paul Mills. I mean, when you look at what Paul Mills is doing this year, he did something that hasn't been done, I think, in 50 years or since, since 1950, where I read something earlier. I mean, they went undefeated in conference, then won the conference tournament championship by 30. Like, that's complete domination. And honestly, do not be surprised if you see uh, Paul Mills' team in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight because they're that good. And they have size. They, they, they're that good. And they have one of the best point guards in America who's a Naismith finalist. So this team is talented. So if they go to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight, I think it's really a no-brainer between Paul Mills or Grant McCaslin, and it's just kind of crazy to see those two guys battling for a job such as Texas Tech, and then that'll be three three Baylor coaches in in, in the Big 12 competing against each other year in, year out. Yeah, it, it would be. Hey, yeah, Scott anyway. Drew used to not be the guy who couldn't coach. Now the whole league wants, yeah, wants some wants of that action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing what happens when you win at the level that he wins, and, of course, with – uh, who Driscoll's had success at North Florida. Obviously, you mentioned McCaslin and also with Paul Mills. All right, King. So, you uh, you know, everyone looks at Scott Drew, and we know that he's an amazing uh, – people think he's just, like, calm and quiet and genteel and all that. And he's a great person. But when he's mad, can you try to explain how mad – without ever using anything, like, other than darn it, what kind of mad have you seen him? Yeah, no, I've, I've seen Coach Drew absolutely pissed. I mean, <laughs> the, the the one thing he does every single time he's pissed, you know he's mad because his lip starts quivering. Like, it, it starts twitching. And, and as soon as you see that, you know Coach Drew is pissed. Like, the maddest that I've ever seen him be was, uh, oh, one time we, we were told not to go play uh, flag football, not to play intramural football because mm -hmm. we – the coaches were scared that we could get hurt. So, you know, one of our coaches is on IG Live. And, no, one of our players is on IG Live. And, you know, one of the guys commented, some random dude commented on there, you know, you played great last night in the, in, the, in the flag football game. And I think Coach Brooks happened to see it. So we walk into the locker room. And Coach Drew gives us all, like, pieces. He cuts off like a Big 12 championship banner, gives us all pieces, and says, all right, put them together and, and, make, and make this banner. So he put them together. And he told that one specific player, now take yours out. And when he took his out, Coach Drew, I have never seen him in my life just go off. He absolutely went in. But what was amazing was he went in without cursing. No matter of fact, he cursed three times. He cursed three times, and his rule is if you curse, you got to do 10 push-ups. So right after he got done, it was about five or 10 minutes of him just going in on his player. Right after he got done, he jumped down and did like 40 push-ups. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. For a man to be able to go off and control his tongue so well, to only curse three times when he was that hot, and then have the self-discipline to just drop down and do push-ups. Yep. That, was, that, that was incredible. Did did the did the locker room or was it a pride? Did everyone just explode? Like almost like oh my, it's like a, a relief, a release point. Yeah, no, everybody, everybody honestly was in shock to to see how mad he was. Everybody was like, uh oh, 
this isn't good. We haven't seen Coach Drew on this level. Because I've honestly ever seen Coach Drew get pissed, like genuinely pissed, probably like three times my whole life. So to see him get to that level, we none of us have ever seen that before. Yeah. All right, man. Good stuff. Just true serum. They did get punked. They did today, especially the last 8 to 12 minutes of the game on the boards and also losing to Iowa State. Kansas is just one. They won 